besties and welcome to another Genshin Theory! The newest addition to Genshin's map, Enkenomiya, is one of the most mysterious locations we've explored so far. I have two major theories about it that conflict with each other, so I'll put timestamps in the description for you to choose between the two depending on which one resonates with you more. But before I get into the theories, I have to first explain why Enkenomiya is so special. If you're a longtime viewer of my videos or just interested in Genshin lore, you already know the answer. Enkenomiya is yet another forgotten and ruined civilization like Dragon Spine or Surumi Island. But what sets Enkenomiya apart from its predecessors is its topography. The location is directly beneath Watatsumi Island. Here's the history of Enkenomiya according to the Genshin Wiki. Long ago, around the time of the Archon War, the island nation of Byako Yakuku somehow sank to the bottom of the ocean where they were terrorized by the Dragon Air of the Depths. Only through the light of the Dainichi Mikoshi were they able to survive. Some great Watatsumi houses such as the Yuna clan trace back to those days. After being defeated in the Archon War and fleeing the continent of Tibat, the ancient god later known as Orobashi no Mikoto appeared in Byaku Yakoku. Taking pity on them, Orobashi defeated the Dragonair and sealed it away. Orobashi then used the coral growing off its body to create a path back to the surface world and create Watatsumi Island. The people it saved dubbed this new land Sanganomiya, and in turn began referring to Byaku Yakoku as Enkenomiya. They also began worshipping this god as their Orobashi no Mikoto and Watatsumi Omikami. Thousands of years later, Enkenomiya began bleaching Watatsumi Island's soil, which would endanger the island and slowly turn it into desert if not dealt with accordingly, along with a Dragonair of the Depths or some other monster that may have resided inside waiting to escape to the surface. Suyuko requested the traveler to remove the five seals to obtain the key of the moon bathed deep while sending a request to Sanganomiya Kokumi to authorize entry into Enkenomiya to deal with the problem. She has yet to return a response and the two are currently waiting for the vein flow to be correct. Now that's a lot to unpack, so let's just start at the beginning. Sometime during the Archon War, the island of Byako Yakuku descended into the ocean, leaving them trapped underground. This isn't the first time Genshin has brought up a forgotten civilization stuck underground. Conria was underground as well. It's described as both beneath and beyond Tevat. Similarly, Enkenomiya is beneath Watatsumi Island, which is part of Tevat, and technically you could say it's beyond Tevat because it isn't included on the actual map of the continent because it's underground. But what makes Enkenomiya different from Kanria is its presence of a god, Orobashi. However, Orobashi is quite detached from the rest of the gods. Orobashi never made it past the Archon War. They were killed by A on Yashiori Island millennia ago, and the people who worshipped them have hated her ever since. So for the majority of its history, Enkenomiya and by extension Watatsumi Island have been without a god, even if they still respect one. Because of this, Watatsumi Island and its people have been separated from the rest of Inazuman society for a long time. The Watatsumi army only ever works with the Crux fleet from Liyue and indirectly with the Fatui from Snezhnaya. In all of Tevat, Watatsumi Island isn't completely ostracized, but on the smaller scale of just Inazuma, it is. I think the same can be said for Conria. We know just how detached it was from the rest of Tevat. Nobody in Tevat ever talks about it as if it never existed to them. As for Enkenomiya, I can't remember anybody outside of Watatsumi Island mentioning it. Conria was separated from Tevat, but not literally. If it existed beneath the continent, then it wasn't physically far away, but socially and politically far away. There are civilizations that existed that could have potentially worked with Conrians. Selvin Dagnir, now known as Dragonspine, didn't worship any gods either and also got destroyed by Celestia. So Watatsumi Island has limited allies and was once underground, just like Conria. The first thing that stood out to me about Enkonomiya was the enemies. Not a single human enemy can be found anywhere on the map. That means no treasure hoarders, no Fatui, no Nabushi, no Kairagi, nothing. Instead, we get Hilichurls and Ruin Automatons. In We Will Be Reunited, we learn that Hilichurls are corrupted humans who once lived in Conria and that Ruin Automatons were manufactured solely by Conrians. Nowadays, they're being revived by the Fatui, but we don't see any active Fatui in Enkonomiya. Yet all of the Ruin Automatons in Enkonomiya work. The other enemies are just general elemental lifeforms like slimes, whopper flowers, and specters, which I assume is just due to Tivat's nature. Rift towns are also found in Enkonomiya. In the game's archive, it says that they're creatures of the Abyss. We know that Conria is directly related to the Abyss thanks to its use of it as an element and its new name as the Abyss Order. Similarly, Abyss mages, heralds, and lectors are all over the map. It's important to remember that although they appear somewhat human, Abyss heralds and lectors are not. So far, all Abyss enemies are classified as a group in the archives separate from the group of human enemies. 
Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Enkinomiya is the first place we've seen with no human enemies. The only other area with no human enemies I can remember was the Golden Apple Archipelago, but that was an event-specific location and not part of Tevat. Even Enkinomiya's soundtrack parallels another in the game. I may just be hearing things and drawing conclusions that aren't there, but listen to this song from Enkinomiya. Now compare that to Spin of Ice Crystals from Dragonspine. That sounds really similar to me. If this is intentional, then using the same motif from Dragonspine or Salvin Dagnir in Enkinomiya implies a correlation between the two. Both of them are civilizations that exist underground and have since been forgotten. Remember that Salvin Dagnir is buried beneath layers of so, thanks to Skyfrost Nail and Durin's body. Let's talk about The Pale Princess and the Six Pygmies. This is a book series in Tevat with seven parts, but so far, only the first part is available. Let me read it to you. In the distant past, the Night Mother ruled over the faraway land of night. Here, no light touched the earth, nor did a single tree grow, and there was no life here but the horrendous denizens of the dark. The Night Mother was the source of all sins, and the land of night was the embodiment of her evilness. The cruel Night Mother, who had neither heart nor mouth, was always watching the Land of Night, and her punishments were always unexpected. The only thing she could not bear was the occasional ray of moonlight that made it through the clouds. The light that penetrated the walls of darkness always irritated her. The Moonlight Forest was the only place free from the rule of the Night Mother. Only there could the people bask in the bright moonlight and enjoy the grace it brought to the living. Everyone in the kingdom of the Moonlight Forest was born with fair skin, light-colored hair, and bright blue eyes. Perhaps the constant lack of sunlight and the nourishment of the moonlight was the reason for their beauty, giving them an appearance different from the abhorrent creatures lurking at the edge of the forest. To me, this story seems like a perfect description for Conria. The Moonlight Forest is a faraway land where only moonlight falls and is seen as a refuge from the evil Night Mother. Its citizens have light hair, fair skin, and blue eyes. I think this story is a metaphor for Tevat, Celestia, and Conria. Tevat is the land of night where Celestia, or the Night Mother, watches it constantly and gives out unexpected and cruel punishments to its denizens. The only place where people are separated from Celestia, or the Night Mother, is Conria, or the Moonlight Forest. The people of the Moonlight Forest all have light hair, fair skin, and blue eyes. Two of the three Conrians we've met, Dainsleaf and Albedo, match this description perfectly. Kaya, another Conrian, doesn't match this description, but there are a few explanations for it. Maybe his skin just tanned when he left Conria because it was the first time he'd ever been in the sun. Maybe he just dyes his hair blue so people don't suspect him of being Conrian. We know Kaya's dad is from Conria, but we know nothing about his mom, so maybe she just had darker skin and blue hair and Kaya just happened to inherit those traits. But the Pale Princess and the Six Pygmies can be seen as a metaphor for Enkinomiya, too. The Land of Night is still to that, but the Night Mother is the Dragonair of the Depths and the Moonlight Forest is Enkinomiya. The story works either way. I think it's worth mentioning that Enkinomiya has a lot of references to night, just like the story. The map has two states, White Night and Evernight. Either way, the submerged location is in a perpetual state of nighttime, just like the Moonlight Forest. I have two possible theories for what these parallels mean. The first is that Enkinomiya was once part of Conria. We don't know exactly when Conria formed, we don't even have a rough estimate to use. But when Enkinomiya sank into the ocean, they were encroaching upon what is thematically Conria's space, whether it existed or not. If Conria existed before Enkinomiya sank, then it might have landed on top of or right next to it, giving them no choice but to join the underground nation in order to survive. We know Conrians are kind of sneaky and underhandedly confrontational, so the general consensus among Enkinomiya's people likely would have been join or die. If Conria came into existence after Enkinomiya sank, they could have run into it while creating their expansive underground tunnel system. Again, Conrians are sneaky and confrontational, which could have threatened the people of Enkinomiya even though they would have had seniority over the location. At the end of the main world quest that takes us to Enkinomiya, we learn that a researcher we've been working with, Enjo, is actually an Abyss Lector. That can only mean one thing, he's part of the Abyss Order and that makes his motives clear. The Abyss Order exists to avenge Conria, so we know that must be what Enjo wants. Before you fight him, he says, an entire nation was relocated, the door to the depths was sealed, and that nation was stirred up in an eastern expedition to cover this truth. That's not the first time we've heard Abyss Lecters mention the truth. 
They have plenty of lines mentioning it. Hear the truth in the name of truth and the truth shall endure are some of them. I think that the truth they often reference has to do with the story of Conria's destruction as a whole, but let's focus on the truth that Enjo talks about instead, because I think it's different. If Enkinomiya was once part of Conria, then how come Watatsumi Island still stands? How are there living descendants of Enkinomiya's people? For that to happen, there had to have been a split between Conria and Enkinomiya after its annexation. Conria, after learning about Enkinomiya's involvement with the god, would likely feel betrayed and give up control and or occupation of Enkinomiya. The truth Enjo wants to share is the truth about Enkinomiya's history not just told by Watatsumi Island. From what we've heard from everyone on Watatsumi, Enkinomiya has nothing to do with Conria, but Enjo's existence implies that the opposite is true. He wants Watatsumi Island to take responsibility for the betrayal of Conria and tell the truth about its long-gone partnership with the fallen nation. The other theory is that Enkinomiya is just a metaphor for Conria. This isn't the first time we've seen major narrative parallels between Conria and other places in Tevat. There are plenty of parallels between Conria and Salvin Dagnir, and maybe Surumi Island if you really want to see them. Enkinomiya is exactly how I picture Conria in my head, but I don't think that's just confirmation bias. I've actually seen a lot of people say the same thing. If all of us are thinking the same thing, then surely we're not all wrong. So I feel like Mihoyo is trying to tell us something with Enkinomiya, they're practically screaming it at us. <laughs> Enkinomiya being part of Conria is a cool idea, but I don't know if it completely holds up. If that really is true, then I assume there's huge hidden areas beneath the rest of Tevat that were also part of Conria before the Cataclysm. But we've seen no solid proof of that so far. The closest thing we have is the underground tunnels leading from the Nameless Island in Mondstadt to Decarabian's Tower in the Spiral Abyss, but we have nothing in Liyue. So, at least for now, I feel more comfortable saying that Enkinomiya functions as a preview of Conria. It feels like foreshadowing. This all feels too similar to Conria's story to completely ignore it, but at the same time, Enkinomiya has its own separate story that also deserves attention. But either way, Enkinomiya has clear ties to Conria. So I may or may not have, but definitely did do 50 pulls on Xiao's banner. I was on 50-50 and I got a Kuching constellation, but that's fine because now I have guaranteed C1, Zhongli, or Yai, depending on how I feel later when Lantern Rite gives us a bunch of Primo gems. I really wanted Yinjin early, so that's why I pulled, but I guess I can just wait for the free 4-star from Lantern Rite. So good luck to everyone pulling for Xiao, Shenhe, and Yinjin. And please manifest Yinjin for me in some way. <laughs> Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Bye, besties!